How's it going guys? In this video, I am going over bleeding and shock management. There are going to be two parts to this topic. In this first video, I am going over the steps of the skill, but I'm gonna explain a lot. I'm gonna cover why you do what you do for every single step, okay? And also some considerations depending on where you are training. Also, on the second video that I'm making for this topic, I am going just straight through the skill without explaining anything and pretty much how you should do it for your NREMT skill. Now, in this video, the first video and the second video too, I am going to be the proctor and the EMT and the mannequin here will be the patient. Now, before the proctor talks, I'm going to say proctor, that way you know that it's the proctor's turn and then I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna go straight into the EMT role afterwards. I hope that was clear enough. If not, I'm pretty sure you'll figure it out after watching it once, twice, or maybe three times. All right, so for bleeding and shock management, uh, for this scenario, I am going to have a patient that has a two inch laceration on the right forearm, okay? So first things first, you wanna say BSI. BSI tells the proctor that you have everything that you need for this skill. So that means I have my gloves on, I have my goggles on, I have a face shield on, I have a gown on. So whatever you need for this skill, you have by saying BSI, all right? You're telling the proctor that I have everything I need to be safe and not get contaminated for this skill. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna address the wound. So I'm going to apply pressure to the wound. And it's also good and helpful to tell the proctor, or ask the proctor, does this stop the bleeding? The proctor, so the proctor now, is going to say, the bleeding does not stop or the wound is still bleeding. Okay, at this point, you can either have your, imagine, your, your patient or your imaginary partner maintain pressure on that wound. So for this skill, I'm gonna have my imaginary partner go ahead and maintain pressure on this wound while I get my tourniquet. Now this is not a tourniquet. It's a prop that's going to act like a tourniquet. I'm not gonna to cover tourniquets in this video because there are many different types. If you do want me to cover tourniquets, go ahead and ask in the comments below. Just leave a comment and I will make a video on different tourniquets and how they work. But for now, you're going to go ahead and put the tourniquet above the wound. Now, it's very important that you put the wound, I mean, I'm sorry, the tourniquet at least two inches above the wound, all right? If the wound is really close to the elbow, then you just go right above the elbow. Don't get anywhere clear, anywhere close to the elbow or a joint because that may make the tourniquet come loose, okay? So I'm gonna pretend for this one that my wound is pretty close to that elbow, that bending, right, where it bends. And I'm gonna put my tourniquet well above the elbow. If you wanna be super safe about it, just because you wanna pass, just always go above the elbow and they can't dock you for it. It's still at least two inches, so it's at least two inches above. All right, so my tourniquet is on there. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it up. The tourniquet is good. And ask the proctor again, if they haven't said anything, does the tourniquet stop the bleeding? The proctor, so the proctor now will say, Bleeding has stopped, but your patient is now showing signs of hypoperfusion or they may, shock. they may say shock. What you do then is you're going to verbalize. I'm going to position my patient appropriately. And if you have an actual human being here, go ahead and move them. So I'm going to move the mannequin on the floor for now, okay? So put the patient on the floor or, I'm, or on the gurney and I am going to put him supine. So my patient is now supine and some training, some training facilities or, or courses or colleges, they'll have you elevate the feet six to 12 inches. Some may not. Now it depends on the county, the protocols. Whether you do or not, it's not wrong. Just go ahead and do whatever they train you to do. So I'm going to position my patient in the supine position and I'm going to cover my patient with a blanket, verbalize it if you don't have one, but if you have one, actually put it on your patient to keep them warm. By keeping them warm, what, you're helping the clotting process. You're, the clotting cascade, the warmer your patient is, the faster it works, 
so it forms a clot faster. That's what that does. By laying them supine, you're maintaining that pressure pretty good, at the best that you possibly can uh, with the situation. And also, I'm gonna put my patient on high flow O2, preferably NRB. So I'm gonna do an NRB at 15 liters per minute because you want to pack your patient with O2 because they lost blood. So you really want to pack as much O2 in them as you possibly can. And last but not least, I'm going to immediately transport my patient right now. So just to kind of emphasize on a few things, make sure that you verbalize everything. So don't just do it, actually say it. If your proctor does not see you do it, and they don't hear you do it because you're busy or they turned away, guess what? You did not do it and you're gonna fail your test. So say everything, verbalize it as you do it and actually do it, okay? That way there is no question about whether you did something or not. Uh, check out for your critical fails. And I think I went through it pretty good. If you have any comments, any questions, go ahead and leave a comment below and stay tuned for the next video. It's gonna come on. Uh, shortly or you can click on it on YouTube and that video will just be me doing the entire skill without explaining anything take care guys